thought, how could we really strip this back and actually halve the cost of accounting services to small business owners? And obviously the answer would be technology. We do it at kind of a human level, what the numbers actually mean for, for uh, the individual business owner. Welcome back to another episode of A Kiwi Original. Today on the show, I'm joined by the Beanie team, who is all about accounting in a way that helps those small businesses in New Zealand be more productive and have more insight and reporting transparency into just how your business is running. And thinking about the year we've had and the year we're about to go into, knowing your numbers has never been more important. So really looking forward to this chat with the team. We've got Sue, who's the one of the co-founders. We've got John, who's the CTO, Chief Technology Officer. And then Ryan, another Ryan, love the name, is the Chief Marketing Officer. So between the three of them, that is the Beanie team we're profiling today. Great to have you all on the show. It's great to be here, thank you. So a little bit of background, let's start with you, Sue. The, the origin of Beanie, um, you started around the, I think it was the mid 2010s, kind of in that phase where Zero was doing that big rollout in New Zealand and transforming accounting. Um, what was one of the, the things that you saw needed to happen back then and, and how did Beanie come about? Yeah, so in 2013, I was actually sitting working for another chartered accountancy business, and it was actually quite a progressive business, but it really, really dawned on me that actually not much had changed since I trained in like the 1980s in terms of how accountants actually deliver service to small business owners. And also, I had been a small business owner quite a few times myself, so I think I really had that kind of perspective. And so I just uh, I was thinking to myself, I was sitting at the desk watching paper being pushed around and lots of manual entry. I thought, how could we really strip this back and actually halve, halve the cost of accounting services to small business owners? And that was really kind of the, the light bulb moment. Um, and obviously the answer would be technology. And I was just so, so fortunate whilst I was wandering around having these vaguely subversive thoughts about disrupting the accounting profession, I bumped into John Curtis. So John and I have known each other for like an incredible length of time. We met dancing on the tables at the Holy Cow <laughs> nightclub in Topor, yay. So um, so we went back a long way and I'm like, John, let, let's really shake up the accounting industry. What can we do? So we basically just sat down and I was kind of thinking out loud about how we could change things and. John was coding and that was how Beanie got started. So just to segue off to what you said there, Sue, John, what did you see in Sue's vision around transforming accounting through software where you thought, actually, that's something I can contribute to? Oh, I was so keen on this because having been a, a contractor and running my own business for a couple of decades by that point myself, I was so over what I had to do to pull my accountant every year in the terms of just getting all this paperwork together and uh, the general expense of the whole thing as well. So I was really keen uh, to work with Sue on really, you know, disrupting the industry is one way to put it, but just, just getting value for money and automating a lot of these processes, which should be a lot simpler and a lot more transparent for people uh, and make it actually you know, a fun thing to fill out and, and do. And just to make sure we loop you in there, Ryan, um, one of the things I saw on the, the website from one of your, like the customer success stories was someone who said, uh, you know, I'm just a small fry business and it feels like I get premium service. It's tough to get accounting business because most business owners already have an accountant. How do you get them to shift across or, or choose uh, Beanie to start with, with your, under your CMO role? And I guess it's about illustrating the difference, how we've got a, a mix of accountants and technology that we pair together to give a really awesome experience rather than just having one or the other. So, so yeah, we primarily go after that small business. A lot of them haven't had an accountant or, or are brand new to it. So really need handholding from day one, which is where we fit in. And you've got this new, this tool called Beanie Wealthier and Beanie Wealthier from your website says it directly integrates with Xero and provides useful business insights and a simple and accountable way to set goals to make you wealthier. Xero does a lot, but there's a lot of things it doesn't do. What does the, the Wealthier tool do there for business owners? Yeah, well, Wealthier came about uh, because we saw a need to really um, make it simple and obvious as to where your business is heading. So um, although Xero lets you set budgets and it has reporting all over the place, um, even I found I wasn't using it because it was just a little bit too hard to get to and access. And we should be able to frame that in a way that we can pull that information in and then present it 
to our clients as a, in a useful, easily readable and digestible form. So that's where we started and um, pulling in, in, encouraging people to do their budget in zero for a start and then pulling in all that data against um, their real sales data and their um, net profit and uh, their budget data and then looking at where that's where that's tracking but then break it down into just plain english of you performing better or worse than last quarter um here's where we can see you going if you want to improve your um net profit here are some things you can do if you want to improve your turnover here are some things you can do and you get to schedule them into your into your calendar and then um, track actual progress against those and then see how much difference that is making in your business on your bottom line that's interesting. So it's actually got a, an intelligence piece that maps into you actually taking action, not just reporting, but um, taking a future action, knowing what the Beanie system is telling you now. Yeah, exactly. So it's important to, to be able to take action on these things. Otherwise, it sounds like a good idea and just sits in the background and you know what you should be doing. But until you put a date on it, uh, often this is how human nature is, often it doesn't get done. So that was one of the steps we took. So saying here yeah, some simple things you can start working on and you can add your own as well and um, and you just go from there what's been the experience through covid for businesses who have been using your your beanie tool um to to have that visibility and take those actions at quite an uncertain time in terms of uncertain revenue and uncertain costs what, what we found it was it was it was really quite scary so as soon as the country locked down in April the demand for accountants uh, uh, you know across the sector just absolutely uh, skyrocketed upwards because of course everybody wanted to understand their numbers it was so so important that people could see their runway see how much space they had left and it was uh, if you look at all our graphs in terms of production support and sales everything just doubled overnight Wow. Um, unbelievable uh, demand and so wealthier is a really it's a really kind of just a handy tool to see so you can immediately see what's happening with your sales against last year on budget so it just gives visibility um, on what on kind of what the future is bringing but definitely COVID compressed and intensified demand for our services without a doubt at NZ made certainly we had the that same thing happen you know the big buy local shop local movement so we had a, a lot of businesses join and I found myself back in spreadsheets, kind of doing the, the forecasting and cost and wanting to make the most of the opportunity, but not wanting to overspend on marketing, not knowing how much license revenue was going to come in. Is um, Beanie Wealthier a tool that, that I could use, even though our accounting services are done internally within the organization? Or do you have to shift everything across to uh, Beanie in order to use that tool? At, at this point, um, Wealthier is like an open trial. Um, we're just trying to get as many people on board as possible just to see how people are using it so we can actually make it even more powerful and useful. So at the moment, you don't have to be a Beanie client. You do have to sign up on the Beanie site, but there's no strings attached. You can just hook your Zero account up into Wealthier and it will pull through information for you. So it's available to everybody. What are some of the other services that are they're at the core of the, the Beanie range? Okay, so there's lots and lots of boring stuff around, I've got to be honest. So uh, financial statements, tax returns, GST returns. I always say this quickly uh, because everyone gets switches off pretty fast. Um, I guess one of the kind of the key things that we do um, at the moment, we do it at kind of a human level is provide explanations and actually people talking to other people about what it all means. So we've got a support desk that's pretty much going 24 seven and you can ask kind of ask them anything. And that's our clients love that it's included in the price so they don't have to kind of worry about oh my god if i ask this question am i going to get a 300 hundred dollar bill so that's really cool um yeah so and then we've got the chartered accountants as well who are doing a lot of just like what does this mean for you so a lot more sort of nuance about what the numbers actually mean for for uh, the individual business owner but what we're moving into and this is where i'm getting super excited is moving into a lot more analysis of that wealthier data so we can start to provide um, automated advisory as well so the, the system and the numbers and machine learning will start to tell the story about what's coming up for our clients um, so this is kind of the next edge we're, we're working on at the moment. That sounds like a, a big technology build is is coming your way, John. Uh, yes, yes, it, the, 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 I can see the tsunami on the horizon. Now we've got a lot of really cool projects coming up and a lot of it's to do with the integrations we've now got with um, 
with other systems that I mentioned zero earlier, but we've also got integrations to the inland revenue and to we've started with this open banking initiative that um, is kicking off in New Zealand so that all the banks are now subscribing to this open API. So we're, um, as a client to that service, we're proud to be part of that system as well. So it's one of many areas that we're going to be able to pull data in so that you can look at Beanie as being like a, a one portal with all the information we can pull into it for you and then um, look for um, trends and see how we can help you based on, on where you're at and where, where we see you know, New Zealand going as a whole. Let's talk a little bit more about that open banking side of things because I don't think Kiwis are really um, ha- have got their head around what the opportunity is, whether it's a business or a consumer, that you know that whole um, owning your own data and taking it with you rather than the, the bank owning it, what that actually opens up for the, the tech sector in terms of new innovation, um, but also for, for um, new financial products or services to be offered to, to create more smarts um, with your data, not not data that your bank holds. I, I think that there's there's different kind of lo- layers in in open banking for us. So there's some um, there are definitely some layers around um, around the fact that we need a lot of information from the banks to do our job well. And so at the moment we have to go via the client, and that's actually quite irritating for the client for us to say, "Can we please see your bank statement?" So we'll be there'll be some real practical um, and easy mm-hmm. wins for us. So that's that's one layer. I think a second layer is going to be around if we can see where people have been, then we can much more accurately forecast where people are likely to be going. And so we can overlay that data over the zero data and start to uh, provide a far more kind of complex picture of their whole financial uh, arrangements. And then there are some really practical steps. So if somebody's got a BNZ bank account, ASB and Kiwi Bank, and maybe got different investments, loans, and then um, transactional accounts. If we can pull all that information into one dashboard for them, so instead of having to go to three or four different apps, they can come to Beanie and just see all their, all their kind of the whole financial picture in one place. I think that will be, I think that will be cool. That's what I see. John, what do you see there? Yeah, on, on top of that, um, just breaking up the, the monopolies, a lot of services have on, as you say, Ryan, your data. Um, and breaking it open does open up a wealth of potential for New Zealand businesses to start building value-added products around that data. Um, already from that gateway, you can get transactional information and balances, but you can also um, look at payments and set up payments as well. So it does break up the stranglehold that um, a lot of you know, monopolies in New Zealand have had for a very long time and does you know, lay the playing field right open for people like ourselves to add value. And not only just pull the data in, like there's a number of services that will show you any number of, um, of graphs based on that data. But again, it's the how we treat that data and how we interpret it in a form that's easy to understand for curricular business people who don't have the time to learn the jargon or just want to know um, how I'm performing compared to last month and how I'm likely to be performing in the next few months. Yeah, that visibility gives certainty. And I think one of the areas I'm most excited about with the open banking part is the the contract area where as a small business, sometimes you you get really excited if you get a big deal, but also fearful. What happens if they don't pay and I, I bring in these contractors or I expend the this capital? And so with open banking and with contracts, you can almost um, know through an intermediary, you're going to have that money in escrow um, and you can complete the contract and have digital um, confidence that you'll get paid. So lots more innovation in that area. When do you think that the standards, when uh, John, will you be able to start actually doing the the work on, you know, building a, a Beanie API that can plug into this open banking standard to to provide this, you know, aggregated view that Sue's talking about across all the, you know, what is a multiple number of apps now that we have for banking? Yeah, well, we're working with the, um, the gatekeeper for that service at the moment. They've got a sandbox for developers to use. Um, we're pretty much most of the way through our development there. We just need to get certified from them. Uh, on the other side, each of the banks also get certified by this intermediary against their API. Um, and once they're satisfied, then we can actually go one-to-one to each of the banks to say, hey, we've got certified on this API and we're away. So um, we've got a lot of projects in the pipeline at the moment. So how far away we are from implementing this. I'd like to think it'll be in the next six to eight months, um, but we're getting getting very close. By so, the end of March 21, I'm thinking, Ryan, March 21. definitely, March 21. <laughs> and uh, leave the final sprint just before the end of the financial year, get it all done on the, the 30th and the 31st. 
Um, John, what's it like finding the the developer talent in New Zealand? Like, what what are we like um, as a as a coding um, you know software house country? Yeah, it's it's actually really hard as a especially as a smaller company. We're obviously not a startup anymore, but having been through that. Um, at the time we were growing, we had a lot of competition from Vend and Zero, who were just hoovering up developers everywhere. I've been to some um, conference after match functions, and there's Rod Drury and, and Vaughan there, sort of poaching every developer they could get their hands on. Uh, so it's quite it's quite scary. And when you advertise, you as everybody who's done this knows, you get a gazillion overseas applicants. Even though you say you must be able to work in New Zealand, etc. So it's really hard to to sift through all those. I was very fortunate to have um, a local developer in Topol, where I'm based, um, come over to be the did some work for us on a contract when we started off, and then a few years later he'd been working for um, a government CRI in town here, RGNS, and he came over to us um, and it's been an absolute godsend. So there, there is talent there, and it's often just a case of, uh, of, of, of stumbling into them. And Sue, what gives you the, the, the confidence to have this you know, technology-driven uh, company with the, the talent we have in New Zealand? I guess the way I look at it is you cannot, um, you cannot do anything, you cannot build out a big company anymore anywhere on the planet without tech. Like when you look at the, the big global trends and you look at where the world is going, technology, if you're not investing in technology, then you are going to get left behind. So I don't think we have a choice. We have to invest in tech, in my mind. Um, and I enjoy it. For me, it's it's allowed, I guess, my creativity and my entrepreneurship to kind of have a place to to be in a way that it didn't previously. Like for me, it's quite magical when I say to John, I'm imagining this thing and he kind of goes quiet for a while and then he comes back and shows me this thing that is suddenly in code and is suddenly a thing. It's to me, it's it's like, you know, it's like magic dust. I always still have that that same thrill when I see tech delivering a real service to real people at a lower price point. I completely agree. Uh, we've been testing something over the last few weeks, which will launch in a couple of weeks um, where you know, we have there's businesses that use the Kiwi trademark without a license. And so usually that involves some kids after school or some students to you know, surf the net, look for the breaches and identify them. Uh, we're working with a New Zealand company called Arcanum, who specialise in machine learning, and they've built the Logo Hunter out of code and it just hunts the web 24 seven. You can feed it CSV files of websites and it will find not just the image, it'll find the logo inside images. So at stalls or at supermarkets. So in terms of protecting brand New Zealand, it's going to be a code driven future. And I probably shouldn't mention any of this on this podcast because I'm kind of launching it now. But um, I, I look, I completely okay. agree with you, Sue. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, we haven't talked a lot about the marketing marketing side of things. Um, what would you like to say about where you think things are going to head in 2021? No, Benny, we're entirely digital, obviously, because that's the sort of customer we're looking for. We're looking for a very digital savvy customer. So all of our marketing efforts predominantly focused online. And I think we'll continue that through 2021. It's that the tone of voice may change a little bit from this year as we start to come back, back into a bit of normality. But I think for the most part, the our channels, channel mix will stay very similar as it has been. And looking at your background, you've, you've done a lot of marketing consulting. I, I saw on the site you consulted to, I think it was 260 something clients. So you're definitely deep in the, the tool side of it, I'm imagining. Is there any tips you'd have for New Zealand manufacturers about where they should be spending their time between you know, organic, uh, social, paid social, organic search, paid search, um, any other tips and tricks that you're seeing is uh, converting well? Yeah, it's, a, it's a, a great thing. And I guess the channel mix will depend on the industry, right? And where their customers come from and whether they're local or overseas or the, where that mix goes. But I think the first thing would be to understand those channels, but really get some reporting in place where you can see what, what's, what customers and sales are coming on on each of those channels. So you know where to double down on rather than floating around week across all eight, eight or nine channels, really focus on the ones that are, are performing. And is it still quite a, uh, quite a challenge just to produce enough content for all of these algorithms to, to consume and, and optimize? 
yeah, it's it's something we've battled with, yeah, the, the whole time here, and we're, we're scaling up on continuously, just the same thing, just trying to f figure out ways to bring enough high quality content that offers value, rather than just doing content for content's sake, which everyone's sort of done with. Yeah, uh, I mean, our our approach here is we'll do like pillar content like this, the hero contents, long form. Uh, you need to be a motivated listener or watcher. So it tends to be someone who's already wanting to evaluate the service and want to know more about the background of the company before they, they shift across. Uh, but then we'll do uh, very short chunks on particular issues. So, you know, there'll be one on uh, open banking with John. There'll be one on what we just talked about there, Ryan, on the, the search and social part or on the origin of the company with you, Sue. And we would put that on LinkedIn. And with each of those little digital breadcrumbs, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But if we're throwing them out there, we get to learn about the audience and what the audience wants more of. Um, is there any question I haven't asked or um, an area that any of you would like to, to cover before we wrap up? I guess at a, at a, at a, a kind of a macro level, um, one of the drivers behind Beanie was to help New Zealand businesses be more prosperous and be more productive. And so again, when I was thinking about the sort of the origin of Beanie, um, I was really influenced by Sir Paul Callahan talking about raising the prosperity of New Zealand. And that was sort of, that was just before we formed this company and it's definitely in the DNA of the company. And also that's where Wealthier, kind of the, the, the wellspring of Wealthier as well. What I'd say about that right now is, I think with COVID-19, a lot of really good New Zealand companies have had to think, they've had to pivot, they've had to reconsider where they want to be in the world and in New Zealand. And I, I really, really hope that New Zealand companies now use kind of all the smarts of this great country to actually kind of to pull us forward in a productive sense. I, I think this is a great opportunity for New Zealand. I really, really hope we all take it. John, anything to add to those great comments of Sue there? No, I, I, I can't match that. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's 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 been a, a real it's been a real privilege to, to be part of this because I think that Sue's overriding vision about uh, delivering value to New Zealand businesses and improving their bottom line. Um, it does. You see the the good comments rolling in, and you suddenly realise you are actually making an actual difference to the New Zealand economy and to people's well-being. Because it's not just the business that's involved. It's it's also it's people's livelihoods and, mm -hmm. and their life and people have a lot of different reasons for running their business some people do it to to grow their business other people just want to have a solid uh, foundation for their family and a legacy to pass on but if we can be part of that uh, and help them in some way then that's um, yeah pleased to be here there was a, a stat that i read over the last 12 months like year on year from august to august um, from last year, five thousand, five and a half thousand businesses started up, and then this year it's been fifteen and a half thousand. So COVID's been a moment where people have thought, "Now's the time I'm going to go for it." So, if what you're creating helps them be more either more productive because they get to do the things they want to do, not necessarily the numbers part of it, or provide that reporting side of it, so it gives them the confidence or at least gives them visibility or um, back to what you said, Sue, on the being able to pick up the phone and actually call someone and say, what does provisional tax mean? What does the consolidated statement mean? Or, or why do I have this thing called COGS in here? Like those are the types of questions that um, when you start a business, you start it for the, the product or the service. You don't start it for the, the P&L or the, the balance sheet, but you're in it every day from, from probably month one that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And I guess that's that's how I see our role. What we do is probably 5% of what every business owner kind of needs to do in terms of the whole picture. We've got 5% that we're domain experts in, and that's where we want to make our difference. Just and, as that, really. and that's you know my challenge to New Zealand manufacturers. There's uh, you know they employ over a third of a million people in New Zealand. Uh, we've got 1500 that put the New Zealand made logo on it. It's now an ecosystem approach to business. We need to be working with each other. And my challenge to those businesses is look outside manufacturing, look at those businesses that are creating software for you. You know, This is by Kiwis for Kiwis to make our nation more productive and have a bit of fun along the way. That's the Sir Paul Callahan vision. Uh, we like our standard of living and we'd like it to maintain at a minimum and ideally increase. Absolutely. 
thank you all for your time today and I really appreciate what you're coding and making on behalf of New Zealand businesses. We need more people like you that are taking the leap, that see things differently, that we can have a different type of future through digital and productivity. So keep doing what you're doing and I'll make sure that this link to the Beanie Wealthier um, software is in the show notes. And also when we send it out to our, our 1500 manufacturers, I'll put a little note in there to say, hey, if you're on Zero or any other accounting integration that Wealthier works with, you might want to check this out right now. Thanks, Ryan. That's fantastic. It's been such a pleasure.